Hey, Robins Nation. Um, I am here to teach your lumbar uh, and low back pain exercise class today. Today is class number seven or eight. I'm sorry, I forget the number, but uh, either way, we have 20 classes coming your way all together, so we are just moving right along. Um, trying to give you some tips and some help in uh, trying to navigate our way through sitting most of the day and you know maybe doing a little bit more yard work and um, just stuff around the house than we're used to. If you didn't catch Todd's class on Wednesday, it, that video is up on our Facebook and he actually went through all of those things of how to protect your back, how to protect your upper back, your lower back, and just how to work safely at home. So. Make sure you um, check that video out if you are nervous about trying to get into, you know, some of your um, some of your home activities and you know working around the house. You get to learn what your power zone is and um, you know how to stay safe while you're doing stuff at home. So definitely check that out. Like I said, that class was on Wednesday, but it's up on our Facebook page as one of our videos. Um, so. As you know, if you've been to any of these classes, you know this is really just an educational video. So I'm going to try to give some modifications as we go along, for you know how to change up the exercise a little bit if uh, if it's painful. Um, but really important, if you are having any pain during any of these exercises, um, and you know especially if that pain does not go away, absolutely get help from a medical professional. But guess what? We are medical professionals here at Robbins Rehabilitation as, uh, as physical therapists, physical therapist assistants. Um, we are here to help you navigate your pain um, and try to get you some answers. Um, so definitely hit us up if you are feeling any pain with any of these exercises, but everything that we're doing here is basically things that most people can do. We're not doing anything extreme. This isn't going to be a crazy, you know, hard workout. It's really just for like I said, it's your low low back. So low back pain, um, if you have reoccurring low back pain, it's just going to give you some tips to maybe maybe eliminate getting low back pain ever again. So staying consistent with your exercises um, is definitely key to that. Um, so in a minute, I'm just going to let some people uh, come on. I, I don't think we have too many people on quite yet. And uh, yeah, so I'm just going to talk a little bit longer until um, we get some more people on. All right. Hi, Barbara. Nice to have you on again. Um, I think Barbara was our winner. Uh, so actually, that brings up a good point. Barbara was our winner last class for sharing um, sharing our Facebook posts. So what happens is right now, as you're uh, watching me, I want you to hit share. So that's actually going to share the link from this video onto your um, onto your Facebook page. And that gets you put into a drawing for winning a free foam roller and lacrosse ball. Now for this class, you don't need any of those things, but I am gonna show with one of the exercises how you could use a foam roller. So um, foam rollers are very useful. And uh, I had a whole class that was on foam rolling and uh, lacrosse ball rollout to um, try to you know loosen up your body. Like I said, we're, we are in a time right now where we're doing a lot more sitting than we're used to. So. Um, Share the link right now. It gets put you into a drawing. You can get a free lacrosse ball and foam roller. All right. So let's, anything else I need to go through right now. Um, so Todd is going to be answering your questions. So if you have any questions or any pain or you have a question about a modification that we're doing, uh, please type in the chat. Todd is there to answer your questions. Um, and I'll try to kind of look at the chat as as we're going. Sometimes a little, it's a little hard since it's on this tiny little phone. All right, so um, introduce myself. My name is Holly Burns. I'm a physical therapist here at Robbins Rehabilitation. I actually think I'm coming up on uh, seven years here at Robbins. Um, so I, you know, love working here. We get to do this. We get to, we love educating our patients and our community. Um, so, you know, this this is just one of the ways that we like to, um, you know, just share our knowledge with you guys and um, hopefully help you, uh, you know, share with your friends and your family and, you know, just help get the word on and how, you know, how we can do things for our bodies to help ourselves. Um, 
So some things we're gonna do today, uh, you know, not, like I said, we're not gonna be doing anything extreme, no crazy workout, but we always wanna start with a little bit of a warm up. We're gonna warm our spine up and then go through um, just some simple exercises and I'll explain what they are as, as we're going through and what they're good for. Um, and, uh, and then at the end, just go through, um, you know, some, some education about how to sit properly and how to lift properly. Those are probably two of the most common things that we hear is that, you know, when I sit for too long, I have low back pain or I lifted this and then I had low back pain. Um, and I really have to be careful with how I lift. Well, if you know how to sit and you know how to lift, the uh, reoccurrence of this injury, these injuries um, goes down quite a bit. So I want you to be, you know, filled with knowledge um, and we would love to see you in our doors, but if we can keep you out of our doors for as long as possible, that's, that's the key. We want you to be educated. Okay, so um, we have a few people on, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and get started because this video will be uh, up on our Facebook and phone calls don't help. <laughs> All right, so right after we are done here, this video will be up and um, you can rewatch it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. All right, so um, I have a mat here. You don't need a mat, but just helps with a little bit of comfort. And we're gonna start on um, laying down on the mat. Okay, so now, one of the ways that you can use this, so you do not need this, but if this is an extreme position for you, um, you might need this for help, and I'll explain why. So I'm gonna lay on my side, and I'm gonna prop my knee up on this foam roller. Now, it could, doesn't have to be a foam roller, it could be a pillow. Um, so our motion is going to be, like I said, rotating and warming up the spine. So you're gonna have your arms out in front of you. If you need a pillow underneath your neck, feel free to do that and you're just gonna open your spine up and back. So obviously this is a low back uh, class. So if your low back is painful, if you were to take something out from underneath your knee, that's when you would add in the foam roller. I am actually I'm pretty good, so I am going to do without so that I can warm up my lower back just a little bit more. All right, so arms out in front, like I said, pillow underneath your neck if you need it. And we're just gonna open up to the side. So open up, you should feel a nice stretch through your rib cage and through your lower back, and then come back. We're gonna start out with five on each side. Open up, and back. That was two, open up. Try to keep your knee on the ground or on the foam roller or on the pillow, wherever it is. And you're trying to get your shoulder, this is actually my tighter side, so I'm trying to get my shoulder down towards the ground. It doesn't want to go because this is my, this is my tighter side, but I'm trying to go further every time. Okay, now we're just gonna switch around to the other side. Just get up nice and safely. And I'm just gonna swing around. So that top leg comes forward. My arms are out in front of me. Switch around that pillow if you need to. And we're gonna open up. And close. And number two. I'm a little close to my couch, so I'm gonna I'm gonna bring my arm in a little bit. Or you can even put your hand underneath if there's something next to you, and just give yourself a little extra stretch. Nothing too hard, just a little fingertip pull. And one more, getting that spine nice and warmed up. Okay. Good. So next we are gonna go on our hands and knees. So um, our backs, uh, we're, we're taught time and time again to protect our back um, and to not bend at our back and, and lift things from bending over our back. So our backs actually start forgetting how to bend, how to bend forward. So this exercise is to help activate some muscles that help you uh, bend your back safely. 
Now, a little disclaimer, if you have disc issues, meaning if you have a disc that is herniated or bulging and you have nerve pain going down your legs, I would not recommend doing this. As we sit back here, I'm just gonna have you go flat back like this and we'll just modify that a little bit. So if you know that you have known disc issues or if you feel anything going down the legs with this, stop the exercise and stay with a flat back. Okay, so for this exercise, you're going to round your back. So I really want you to feel like someone punched you in the stomach. Your abs should be tight. Push your hands into the mat or into the floor. And then we're just gonna sit back. And we're not sitting back all the way. I'm just gonna sit back until I feel a little bit of a stretch in my lower spine. So again, my spine is, um, I was a dancer, so I did a lot of extending and bending backward in my spine. So my spine likes to live there. So I need to remind it that it can round too, but safely with muscle activation. Round again, we're gonna do five of these. So round, someone punches you in the stomach, push through your hands. Push them away from your body. When you feel that area where you get that maximum amount of stretch in that lower back, then come back up. <clears throat> if you are feeling any pain with any of this, like I said, stick with a flat back and just rock back and forth. This is number three. Remember to push through your hands and come back. Always kind of reset, give your back a little break. Round. Push, and up, one more. Good, okay. So as you see, we're going through some stretching kind of mobilization type exercises first. So we always wanna mobilize and then we'll stabilize. So don't worry, we are gonna to get to that. Okay, everybody lay on your back. So there is a muscle that is attached from the back down through the front of the hip. It actually attaches to the spine. It's called the psoas muscle. Um, I could go into a large description about what, or a long description, about what that muscle can do. It's tight on a lot of people, especially if you have been sitting for a while. It can also cause a little bit of a leg length discrepancy, which if you think you might have one of those, definitely come into our office. Um, we would love to fix that for you. But we're just gonna do some simple exercises that can help to stretch and mobilize that psoas muscle. All right, knee comes up towards your chest. You're gonna put your hands on your thigh and you're just going to resist. So you're gonna push your knee into your hands and your hands into your knee as hard as you can. It's not gonna be a lot of, um, a lot of pressure. So we're gonna hold that for five seconds and relax. We're gonna do that five times on each side. And relax. Number three. So um, muscles respond very well to um, contracting before you stretch them. You can actually get more mobility out of them with a contract, relax, or contract, stretch type of um, type of stretching technique. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna contract it first. So I'm on number five, and then we're going to stretch it. All right, other side, push. So again, I'm pushing my knees into my hands and my hands into my knees. So you see, I'm not really moving. It's called an isometric contraction. That was two. And three. Four. And five. Okay, so now we're gonna stretch it out a little bit. I'm just gonna move this away. So, you're gonna put one leg back behind you. So I have my left leg back behind you. I know it might be backwards to you. Now you're gonna tilt your pelvis this way. So what I mean by that is if my left leg is behind me, I'm gonna pull my hips forward. Like I'm trying to point my like headlights of my hips toward my window over here. So you don't want to let your hips hang out this way. Tuck them under. Bring your arm up overhead. So I have my left leg back. Now my left arm is overhead. And I'm just going to reach back slightly and over slightly. You might not have to move very much at all to get a really decent stretch. So we're going to hold here for about 30 seconds. 
And again, with anything, if you are having pain with this, um, please type in the chat. Todd can help you modify it. Um, give you another option for a stretch. Or we just, you just kind of hang out until we move on to the next thing. Definitely do not want you to have any pain with any of these motions. I think that's about 30 seconds. Other leg back, so now my right leg is back. Tilt my pelvis forward. My hip headlight beams are facing my window. My right arm comes up overhead, so right arm back, right arm up. And I'm going back and over just a little bit. Now you see, I don't have to move very much. So it's not an extreme back bend, just a little movement and I get a really decent stretch. So the reason we're moving the leg and the arm, like I said, that muscle attaches from the spine all the way through the front of the hip. So we wanna get all aspects of that. All right, good. So now we've done some really good mobilizations for the muscle, some muscles and your spine, we've warmed your spine up. Now we're gonna get into the stabilization part. So there are little muscles around the spine that um, unless they are very specifically activated, they don't do a very good job of doing their job of stabilizing the spine. So we are gonna do a couple of exercises to help those muscles really activate and get nice and strong. Okay. So you're gonna go on your hands and knees. So I want you to, if you've ever done a cat cow, we're gonna do that. So I want you to round your back all the way up, not extreme, and then I want you to arch your back down and then find that spot that's right in the middle. And what I mean by right in the middle is that it's basically a flat back. Maybe a little, little bit of a round here. If you were to put a pole on, the, on your back, you should have a little bit of space right at your lower back right here, okay? So again, go all the way one direction, all the way the other direction, and find that middle ground. So we wanna keep that alignment right there, and I'm gonna take my belly button and draw it up towards my spine. So when I do that, I'm not rounding. Okay, I want you to take that belly button, pull it up towards your spine, and it might take you a couple of repetitions to get that contraction. This is called a TA activation, or transverse abdominis activation. Transverse abdominis is right between the hip bones. Now, I'm doing this contraction, and you can hear that I'm talking, and I'm breathing, um, so it's really important for this exercise, because if you're doing it correctly, you should be able to talk and breathe. So it's not, a, I'm not doing this, I'm doing a crunch, right? And using all my, exerting all my energy. It's just drawing up the belly button. So one thing you can do, so I, as I'm doing this, I'm holding for about 10 seconds. While I'm explaining it, we'll probably do it about 10 repetitions. So 10 seconds, 10 times as I'm explaining. You can also put your hand right, right on the inside of your hip bone when you're doing this properly, you'll feel that muscle uh, kind of protrude into your fingers. Okay, so drawing that belly button up. And we're holding. And again, you hear I'm breathing, I'm talking. If you can talk, then you're breathing. So see if you can say a sentence or two while you're doing this. And just as a reminder, we're not rounding the back at all. And you don't want it to be too arched, right in the center. I'm gonna do a couple more for good measure and just to make sure everyone's starting to feel that muscle correctly because we're gonna add on to this in the next, um, the next exercise. So I want everybody to get that muscle contraction first. Okay, so the next exercise is called bird dog or you can modify it and do something called verticals. I'll show both. So the first version is um, bringing one leg back behind you, the opposite arm in front of you. Now what I did first is I drew my belly button up to protect my back, and then I'm bringing my opposite arm and leg out. If that's too much of a balance challenge, you feel like you're gonna fall over, just lift your arm and leg up just a little bit. So you probably won't even be able to see how much I'm lifting up because it's a very little amount. Just enough that you could slide a piece of paper underneath. So. If this is too extreme, just, um, like I said, a little lift, or you can just do one arm and one leg at a time. All right, I'm gonna do the full version here, bird dog, and I'm gonna hold this for five seconds. 
and then come back down. I'm drawing out my belly button, don't forget about that, and breathe. So I'm going to do about five on each side, and I'm breathing. I'm going to do one more. Okay, other side, we don't want to be uneven. Draw that belly button up, opposite arm and leg go out, away from each other. If I'm moving too quickly for you, don't forget this video will be up on our Facebook page. And eventually, I think we're even making it onto our website and YouTube. So I kind of lost count, so I'm going to do one more for good measure. I'm still drawing that belly button up. You see that my back really doesn't move at all because I'm stabilizing it with that transverse abdominus muscle. Okay. So the next one is can be a little tricky and I want you to really be honest with what level you are um, and we're gonna we're gonna do some planks so if that explains anything there are, there are a bunch of different ways that you can modify planks you can start at the wall so I think you can see me over here there's a window here but at the wall and just kind of holding yourself up this way I have my couch here, so I could put my elbows on my couch and do planks that way. I'll show you that. Like this. The side is a little bit higher. I could even go higher and be on my um, armrest. When you are on your floor, you can modify it as well. So on your knees and being on your elbows like this on your toes and on your elbows. And it's actually a tiny, tiny bit easier if you go up onto your hands. Okay. So you have, you can be up at the wall. You can put your elbows on the couch. Um, you can put your elbows on the floor with your um, being on your knees. You can be up on your toes or up on your hands. Okay. So, I'm going to choose the elbows and foot feet option. All right. So we're going to hold this for 30 seconds. It doesn't matter what version you choose. Like I said, just be honest with where you are. And if you have any pain with this at all, you definitely want to stop. So really important. You see that I'm able to talk as I'm doing this, which means I'm breathing. Okay, I forgot a really important thing. Make sure your butt is not up in the air. Also make sure that it's not tilting down towards the ground. If you feel yourself start to do that, go down to your knees or stop, okay? Because that is really not a good position for your back. I, I, I'm taking a little break because we're gonna do this again. Do another 30 seconds. Um, but you wanna make sure that when you are up in this plank, that you are tucking your pelvis under. What I mean by that, kind of like when we were standing, those hip bones, or if you imagine headlights on the front of your hip bones, they are pointing straight down to the floor. So they're not facing up, they're not facing back towards my feet, and they're not facing towards the front wall. They're directly down towards the floor. So let's come up again. We're gonna hold for another 30 seconds. If you can't do a full 30 seconds, no problem, you'll work your way up and hold. So I'm tucking my pelvis under, using my abs, of course, I would hope so. Let's hold for another few seconds. All right, and relax, good. A couple more things for you. So our hip strength and our ability to be able to bend down properly, like I said, bend down, um, Squat down properly, really important for your the health of your health of your back. And glute strength. I'm not going to go all into that. If you want to learn more, just type in the chat, and Todd can answer some questions. 
Um, but squatting, glute strength, hip strength, really important for low back health. Okay. So we're going to do some squats. Now as I squat down, I'm going to start with my hips going backward. Kind of the opposite of what we were just doing. So my hips go backward. My knees are aimed to be right over my ankle bones. I know it's a little dark in here, so it's hard for you to tell. But my knees are right over my ankle bones. My butt sits back like I'm sitting back in a chair. Which, if it's too much to do a freestanding squat, just do some sit to stand. So it's you're sitting back into a chair and coming up. Okay. So let's do some squats. You can bring your arms out in front of you. You're going to squat back and up. I'm going to try for 20. I'm probably going to lose count. Um, so drawing that belly button in is really, really important for this movement. That's why we started with that exercise. Drawing in that belly button so that our back is protected. Because it's not, maybe not so much of a strain just to do these squats, but as soon as you do a squat and you have weight in front of you, or you squat down and you lift up something, which we're gonna go over, it's gonna put a lot of strain on your back. So we want that back to be nice and strong, even when we're doing something as simple as just a body weight squat. I might be around 12, maybe. So you might start feeling a little burn in your glutes, I sure hope so. If your knees bother you, try a couple things. Make sure that your knees don't go in toward each other. Make sure they stay pointing forward. And make sure that your hips are going back. If you're squatting down like this, you're gonna get some pinching in the ankle, some pain in the knee, and it's not working the right muscles. So let's do three more for good measure. Two. My belly button was drawn in that entire time, and it's going to be really important for this next move. So we're going to learn how to bend properly. So you're going to do a slight bend in your knee, draw that belly button up, and you're going to imagine a stick is right behind your spine, okay? And I meant to grab a stick and I forgot. But you're going to be straight up and down, and that stick is right behind you, keeping your back straight really really important so when we bend down some really common things that happen is the neck comes up like this or the back rounds or we bend the knees a lot and we think that we're bending forward we don't want any of those things to happen back stays nice and straight you're gonna unlock your hips draw your belly button in stick your butt out to the back slight bend in the knees and then come up you might feel a slight hamstring stretch with that that's okay. Just make sure that you don't go into a painful range. Bend the knees slightly, unlock the hips, bend forward, draw that belly button in, don't crane the neck, keep the neck in line with the spine, and come up. Might be a good idea to, if you have a mirror that you can access, to stand sideways and make sure that you're not going like this as you bend forward. Nothing should round in the spine with this. You wanna stick that butt out, see what I did? Draw your belly button in and come back up. Let's do a few more. Draw your belly button in, unlock your hips, bend your knees slightly, come forward, and come back up. So obviously we need to get really good at this without any weight in front of us before we can add weight. So we want to be strong first, body weight, and then we'll add weight. Okay. Let's do a couple more. If you have a broomstick or something, just a light PVC pipe, and everybody has those lying around, we do in the clinic, um, it's good to stick that behind your spine and just make sure you're keeping that aligned. For reference, if you do have a stick behind you, the three things that should be touching that stick at all times, right behind the head, right in between the shoulder blades, and right on your sacrum, that triangle bone right at the bottom of your spine. So sacrum, right in between your shoulder blades and the back of your head. Okay, so that is it for basically our exercise portion. So we warmed up the spine. 
we got the spine moving a little bit better, re-educated how to bend it, um, then we did some exercises to activate those stabilizers of your lower back, and then we challenged those stabilizers a little bit with a couple of motions like our squats and our, our um, hinging. So I want to go through um, some proper sitting techniques and proper lifting techniques. You don't have to do this. It might be good though, to, maybe for the sitting portion, to try to find some things in your house that you um, would be able to use. So I'm just going to give you a tidbit of what I do in my home. One second, I'm just going to grab a pillow. So I am short. I'm about 5'3". So basically all chairs and couches are too, uh, too big for me. I can't touch my feet on the ground. So I almost always have a pillow behind me on the couch or on the chair. But what that does is helps your lower back to get a nice curve. So we have this curve that we're supposed to have in our lower back. So what happens when we normally sit on the couch, right? Sit back like this, we're all hunched over and rounded. That puts a ton of pressure on the discs of your lower back, causing possibly some nerve irritation or pain down the legs, okay? So what you need to do is find something that helps to support your lower back a little bit. Um, actually, sometimes I even have two pillows. Um, to keep that curve. So I even sometimes will fold a pillow you can take a towel, so a towel, and you roll it up so that it looks like a, a little lumbar support. Um, like I said, pillows or multiple pillows. Um, a smaller foam roller can also, it's a little bit harder, but you can do the foam roller plus a towel um, and just kind of give yourself a little bit of support. So then what ends up happening is the rest of my spine kind of falls into place. So I get a little support behind my back, and the rest of my spine is able to just kind of sit in a good alignment. Um, so it doesn't always, doesn't only have to apply to a couch, it can be any chair. So you're sitting in your kitchen chair for work, um, you're sitting in your lounge chair, you know, doing work. Always have something right behind your lower back that's going to help, um, help uh, support your, your spine and help to support that, that curvature. All right, lastly, some lifting techniques. So we did a couple of things. We did a squat and we did a hinge forward. I'm going to add those two things together. A little bit more of a squat than a hinge, but so I have all of my, if you have been in our Lebanon office, you know Jax, my little corgi. So I have all her toys right here. I'm just going to safely pull them out so I can give a little demonstration. Okay. Proper lifting. Draw in your belly button. That is, if you do nothing else, Draw in your belly button. That is going to protect your spine. I'm going to do that little squat so my hips hinge back. And I'm going to keep this weight really close to my body. Really, really important. The further away you get from your body, the more stress there is on your spine, the more your muscles have to work to avoid injury. I'm going to squat down, hinge forward. My back is flat. My, my belly button is drawn in. I'm going to take this and pull it up towards my body really, really, really close, and then I'm going to use my legs to stand up and my back to stand up. So look at this versus, now this isn't very heavy, so it'll be okay for me to do this, this. So I have my legs straight, my back is rounded, and I go to lift this up, it just looks painful, right? And then, oh, I have to do all that work to stand back up, and I put a lot of pressure on my spine. Get nice and close down to the, the thing that you're lifting. Draw your belly button in, remember, number one, draw your belly button in. Nice and close to your body and stand up. Okay, use your legs, use the strength in your legs. Okay. So that concludes today and our class about low back pain um, and low back stabilization. So um, I am just gonna kinda scroll through some of the comments here. All right, we had some great people watching. Awesome, thank you all for being here today. And I don't think I have any questions to answer. And I'm, I know that Todd was on here answering questions as we were going along. So um, don't forget that next Wednesday and Friday, again, we continue our series on uh, COFIT 20. Um, we're going all the way through June with these classes. So keep sharing. Um, Keep, 
you know, telling your friends and family that we have some exercise classes for you. Don't forget to look back and, you know, watch the other videos again. Um, I've heard people say, oh, I'm definitely gonna do that foot class again. I'm definitely gonna do that full body exercise class again. Um, so, you know, go back and watch them, share them with your friends and family. Um, all of these classes are to help you stay safe, stay positive, and stay strong during this time. Um, so we hope that we are helping you do that. Um, don't forget to share and get your name in the running to get a free foam roller and lacrosse ball. And uh, we will see you next time, next Wednesday at noon. Stay tuned for what the subject will be. All right, have a great rest of your weekend. Happy Mother's Day.